Yo, Dre, I've got something to say. I'm here with Sarah Moore. And Sarah, uh, I look to you to find out these things and I am overwhelmed by what might be happening and is happening. What is going on tonight at the Washington County Courthouse here in Fayetteville, Arkansas? Hi, well, it's, it's COVID times, unfortunately, but we're trying to be safe. So we're masked and distance outside, but if people can join us, unfortunately, we're gonna get 23 million, we have 23 million and we're expecting 23 million more next year of COVID relief dollars, American uh, Rescue Plan. Wonderful. These can be used for anything. If you'll look over here, I mean, things like food, rent, mortgage, loans to small business, grants. Great. Rent assistance for small business, job creation, education, infrastructure improvements like broadband and water infrastructure. Thank things goodness. That, things that our county needs. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, there's lots of questions. Last week, you he heard JP's actually not quite sure what we could spend the money on. So we're asking tonight that they pause. They have a community conversation, much like Benton County, where they're, they're asking the community to turn out to meetings where they talk about each section, public safety and health, looking at vaccinations, expanding the health infrastructure, um, each bucket that we could potentially do of like broadband or any kind of capital improvements. And they're gonna look at the broad needs across the county before they make a decision. So we'd love for folks to come out and let uh, the quorum court know tonight, if we move forward on ordinances to spend 20 of the 23 million on a jail expansion, we're not doing justice. Jail is not justice to the community members. We don't all benefit from a jail. In fact, it tears our families apart. We wanna keep our families together and we wanna uplift them. And we can do that by giving them rental assistance, food assistance, and help small businesses. So come out if you can. Sarah, how did, how did jails, how did we go from getting money to the community for providing shelter and, and food and vaccinations and such to now we're talking about jails? How, how did that fit in? Well, we would love to know that. Um, definitely, unfortunately, people are, are too poor to pay bail and get stuck in jail. So we would hear from the sheriff that his constitutional duty is to run a jail. Well, every player in the system has um, an ability to make sure that individuals are not trapped in jail. Two thirds of the folks in jail are just poor people. They are accused of something, but they have not been convicted of a crime. So they need to be out into the community. They need to be working. They need to be taking care of their families. Um, these are things that, that we have not done at this point to put in um, uh, things into the system that can improve it in order to let those folks um, go, go about their lives, um, work on fighting their cases, and being able to be um, uh, community members that are able to be um, contributing into the community. So. I don't know how we got here because we have um, invested in a criminal justice assessment um, and we got the findings of that a year ago and we uh, to date have not really implemented anything. Um, it told us um, different things like failure to appear, that people have burdens and have hurdles to getting to court. They're stuck in jail for 50,000 plus oftentimes and aren't able um, to, to get out because they're too poor. So we're looking for additional solutions that would allow people to um, to be able to be back into the community contributing and able to fight their case because ultimately freedom should be free and having to pay to get your liberty is not constitutional amen to that thank you so much sarah moore right here at the courthouse let's go have our voices heard Absolutely. and um, make this happen and let's do some good and seek some justice